Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're at long last another video. Um, no excuses really for not uploading since last July. It's now March 2023. Um, other than I've just had other projects on the go and haven't had time to work on cars. So as you can see, all three vehicles are here at my home. Um, unfortunately, the Vectra was stalled in a lock-up garage. It got vandalised last October in 2022. Um, not the Vectra, but the garage. Um, I'll stick a picture up now so you can see what happened. Um, I rented it off the local housing association and reported it to them in October. And um, it's basically not going to get fixed till the beginning of April, fingers crossed. So that's unfortunately had to sit out here all through the winter, um, which obviously hasn't done it a lot of good. Hasn't been on the road for a few years. Um, I think 2020, December, the MOT ran out. Um, so the plan is with that this year to get it going. Um, nothing much to report on the insignia other than it needed a new glow plug, which, like an idiot, I forgot to film. Um, so today's video is going to be about the Astra yet again. Um, I've got some footage that I took last summer, in the last summer, um, which I haven't got around to editing and uploading yet, but I'll, uh, I'll do that soon. Um, so we've got a couple of issues with the uh, Astra that we need to sort out today. So uh, let's get it swapped round on the drive, get the insignia off, get the Astra on the drive, and we'll take it from there. So here we are inside the Astra. Um, the two issues are, I don't know if you can hear that one from inside the car. Doesn't sound too bad, but we've got a blowing exhaust. And the second one is, I've been using the car regularly to go to and from work since it's been parked out on the road, so it's moving the insignia off every morning. Well, it's been cold and frosty and horrible, but as you can see, we've got an engine management light popped up there. Um, I know what it is because I've scanned it before. Um, but I'm going to do it again now so you guys can see what the issue is and uh, then I'll explain how we're going to resolve it. So I've treated myself to this newfangled um, code reader. It does a lot of diagnostics and other bits and pieces. I'm not going to get into detail now because I'm not sponsored by the company. I bought this with my hard-earned cash. Um, so basically underneath here you've got a little ODB2 interface that just pops out. If you wonder where that connects into in an Astra H, it's in the centre console. There's a little plastic um, cover here just beyond the gear lever, a little coin tray thing. You pop that out and the socket is, as you can see, just there. So we just plug that in. Not making a great connection by the looks of it. That's better. Made a connection now. So uh, I'm going to set the scanner up code reader up um it takes a little while to diagnose the fault but we'll get that done and i'll come back to you okay so it's taken um <coughs> about four or five minutes to um scan the vehicle it was in focus just now and now it won't focus there we go so basically we've got that fault code which is o2 sensor malfunction bank one sensor two so what that is is the o2 sensor obviously and there are two in the car, one before the catalytic converter, one after. Um, bank one means cylinder bank one, so if you've got a V6, you'll have two banks. Obviously, but we've only got a four-cylinder car, so it's only got one bank. And sensor two is the one that's after the catalytic converter. So that's a problem. Um, I have reset it a couple of times. It disappears, but then it comes back as pending, and after two or three um, restarts of the car 
um, you know, turning it on, turning it off again, um, it comes back. So that needs to be changed as well. So, um, yeah, we'll get on, get the car up on ramps and um, get on with the job. Yeah, so just before we do get on with um, sorting out these problems, I just thought I'd show you. I've cleared the code again um, and it's disappeared. The engine management light's gone, but I know after um, starting and stopping the car two or three times, it will pop back because it comes up on the code reader as a pending code. And also, you can probably hear now a lot better the blowing the exhaust. So, like I said, let's get the car jacked up on ramps or axle stands or something and uh, have a look and see how we can fix this. Right, so as you can see, got the car up on ramps at last. Uh, rear wheels are chocked. Car's in gear inside. Um, so, got the new exhaust system um, or exhaust downpipe. It's split about there somewhere. And my foot is that's the hole for the oxygen sensor got a new oxygen sensor there we'll have a look at that in more detail in a minute so let's get under the car and have a look and see what we're up against right i haven't been under here for a while um this is the flexi pipe and as you can see it's clearly broken there um i can see a hole in it it's split this uh braiding has come away so it's um yeah on its last legs or had it because that's where it's blowing from um, that's where the oxygen sensor goes in they are notoriously hard to get out so it's sort of a bit of a bonus that we're uh, putting a new one in that's plugged in way up there just there now the existing one's got quite a long cable on it you can see it's sort of coiled around there but the other one's shorter but i have measured it and it should reach up to that connector there which is good um, and then way back there you can see it there is the clamp which we've got to undo um, in order to get this whole piece of pipe out here all the way along here all the way along here and then also up there as you can see we've got some rather rusty nuts and bolts so there there there's another one around the other side so there's three in total um, they've all got to come off now when I took the engine out I don't think they were too much of a problem to get off but I'm going to give them a squirt with some uh, good old penetrating oil yeah, there's the other one on that side if I remember rightly as well, one of them was a bit of a pain to get a socket on might be this one here where it's quite close to this um, this exhaust downpipe but we'll get some penetrating fluid on them leave them for a few minutes um, and then see what we can do I think that yeah they are studs studs in the manifold and uh, nuts on the um on the actual ends of the studs that hold the uh, flange on for the downpipe so yeah let's get some penetrating oil on there and uh, come back when we attempt to remove them right so a good bit of penetrating fluid on those three bolts that i showed you and um they've come undone quite easily this one that i'm on now was a bit of a pain um, so I'll just tap the socket on there a little bit and now it's, as you can see, coming out quite easily. Yeah, that's nearly off now. Um, do the other two or three. Um, get them out. Okay, we'll get two of them out. The other one just hanging just to support the, the exhaust a little bit. Um, then we'll move on to the clamp up the back there. Get that off. <coughs> um, better unplug the uh, O2 sensor first. And uh, yeah, we should be able to just drop this exhaust down. I've noticed that the back box is starting to flake a little bit. Um, I don't know how much one of those is. I might end up getting a new one of those, but not not for this video. Hopefully it'll last me a little bit longer till the spring. Well, it is the spring technically, but the weather ain't particularly great at the minute. Luckily got a nice day today. Um, so yeah, let's crack on. So as always, nothing's easy. Um, as you can see there, the bolt that holds the bit of pipe we're trying to change onto the existing exhaust the rest of the system um, was rusted and it's a funny looking thing um, but I had to cut the end of it off to get it out to open the clamp up far enough because I couldn't get as you can see couldn't get that off anymore it was just slipping round it had some funny end on it that was part of the clamp by the looks of it 
and we've also got another little issue so I've done a lot of hammering and pushing and pulling and this clamp doesn't want to come off that exhaust I think that's welded to the rest of the system which goes back there also as you can see we've got a little bit of um, separation occurring occurring there on the rest of the system so it's possible that I'm going to have to change that before the MOT in May <coughs> The other thing is I'm hoping I can get this, so this bit of pipe has got to come out of the existing bit, or the rest of it. Um, I'm hoping I can get that out. I'm not holding out a lot of hope of getting that out without destroying the rest of the system, but we'll see how we go. Um, I've got the uh, O2 sensor disconnected here, so that's off. Just got another bolt. Oh, let's see if we can get up there and have a look. So I've just got this held on now. Um, where are we with one bolt there so if I take that off this whole bit's going to drop and I'm guessing that this bit here is going to come out of out of there um, and then yeah I don't know whether we're going to get this out or not but um, we'll see what happens we've got a bit of a um, well, about 5 mil, 10 mil. so I think we're going to be able to pull that out um, fingers crossed as you can see, and as expected, uh, where are we? The flexi bit has completely parted company with the rest of this system. So, um, yeah, I'm going to carry on off camera and pull this exhaust out because I need both hands. And uh, let's see if we can get it out. Well, I'm quite impressed how that came out in the end. It wasn't too bad at all. As you can see... A um, little bit of uh, pushing and shoving and bending. So I was um, concerned that this wasn't the right pipe, um, but it is. So you can see now, if we just follow that along with the old one and the new one side by side, they are identical. Obviously the bends look a bit different because one's laying inside the other. So now what we've got to do is we've got to put the uh, O2 sensor in. So that is here, if I can get the little cover off, it's got a little, little plastic cover off, and this one handed, I've noticed it's got some sealing paste on it already, um, need to check up how tight that needs to be in there, I guess just tight enough to seal, um, but we'll get that in and uh, then we'll offer up this new pipe. Right, that's the O2 sensor fitted, um, the wire on it is slightly shorter than the one that was on the old one but I did measure it um, I crawled under there yesterday before it started raining and measured it and I think it's going to be long enough to reach up where it needs to be this one was looped round and cable tied there that may be where it's failed actually it might have broken the wiring there because if we look at that it's a bit bit dodge so anyway so yeah I had to use a, an adjustable spanner um, because I couldn't find my um, ordinary spanner that was big enough. You can get a special tool for doing these um, which slips over the cable. It's like a socket thing that slips over the cable but um, I haven't got one and um, as you can see my garage is in a little bit of a mess due to other DIY projects and things that have been going on so that needs to have a good tidy up before we do anything seriously in the spring to cars so I can find stuff but somewhere in there is a spanner that would have fitted that um, I think we'd have really struggled to get this old one out if we'd needed it so like I said before it's a good idea we're, um, we're replacing it but yeah there's the new pipe O2 sensor fitted so let's get it back on the car right so the new down pipe's in place bolted on there new gasket um, I've connected up the if you can see that up there connected up the um, O2 sensor the cable is a lot shorter which is good because I think where that connector is if you look there that's where the cable tie clip thing went through and what I'm planning to do is possibly just maybe put a cable tie around there just to hold that out of the way um, I think that would be a good idea but just loosely just to hold the um, connector up 
rather than put it around the cable just so it stops it dropping down should be okay now the only other thing we've got to sort out is that clamp at the end um, if you remember I had a right pain getting that off now um, I am convinced that that is welded to that um, other part of the exhaust um, the, the back box and everything that section there it won't turn it won't come off and it's free all the way around except for the top which I think it's got a little weld in it so rather than break that off I'm gonna have a look at fixing it um, with a bolt or something so if I can find that that's all we've got to do is clamp that up put a cable tie in around that um, O2 sensor connector and we should be good to give it a test fire okay O2 sensor is cable tied up there like I said I've just put a little one around the socket connector I don't know if you can see that from there um, but it's just supporting it not actually gripping around the cable or anything um, I fashioned a bolt I had to cut a little washer down um, for the clamp up there so it's all clamped up so I think we can go and give it a start and see how it sounds and we've, we've got rid of that um, O2 circuit error um, near engine in the run, running in the background that someone just turned up in a BMW I think it's an M3 or M4 or something but um, not one of my cars okay let's give it a start and see what happens so yeah sounds a lot quieter no engine management lights on let's just cycle the power a few times and just see if it comes back Nope, it's gone out straight away. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll uh, set the scanner up again and we'll give it a quick scan and see if we get any codes back. Right, so in my excitement of uh, checking the codes and finding there weren't any, well, I'll tell a lie, there were a couple, um, but I cleared them, rescanned it, and there are none now. As you can see, engine, manage light, engine management light is off. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to video it and I put the bit of kit away and unplug the dongle so anyway it's uh, it seems to be fixed i'm gonna have a quick look under the car see if anything's leaking exhaust wise um and uh yeah i'll meet you under the car right i hope you can hear me under the engine noise um doesn't appear to be any blowing there it all sounds good um i'm gonna crawl back here see if anything's going on under here uh looks like we have got a little leak there look, which is a pain I'm just wondering about putting that other clamp around there see if that seals it as I've got it it be worth a try isn't it let's see what happens put that other clamp on that new one I bought as well as the one we've got there and uh, see if that will close that up a bit so that's the Astra all put back together, back off the ramps and ready to go. I did tighten that bracket up again, or what I actually did was I removed um, or loosened the bracket off and managed to push the exhaust pipe in a little bit more because it didn't look like it had gone all the way. Um, I tightened the bracket up again and it's still just weeping a tiny little bit. Um, but I think I'm going to need to uh, change that centre section before the MOT in April. So um, we'll sort that out there, get some... Um, exhaust assembly paste or something on it which I probably should have done in the first place so that's just about it for this video I hope you've all enjoyed that or found it useful uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get notified of future videos um, it's free to do so and it helps the channel um, I'd like to try and grow it a bit this year if I can um, we're going to be doing a lot of work on the Vectra this year so hopefully um, You'll all like that, a piece of interesting content. Um, and until then, I'll see you soon. Take care, goodbye.